One of the big things about mindset that's really important to always remember is that you are never going to feel ready. You're never going to feel that this, what you're going to put out, whether that's an Instagram post, an email or a class, that it's good enough. You're never going to feel confident. So if you are waiting for that mindset to settle into you and you're like, oh, I feel confident now, I feel ready now, you're going to be waiting a really long time. My name is Celeste Pereira, and this is the Seeker and Sage Podcast. Woohoo! Celeste, we're back at it. Hiya! <laughs> and this is super, well, I mean, we were just talking about this, but now when I record podcasts, I can see people. It's a very different experience. It's so nice, though. I love seeing your plants and your naked body. (laughs) I mean, I wish I I could see your naked body. You've given away my secret. I podcast naked, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) I am fully clothed, but I get you. Well played. How are you, Celeste? Yeah, very good. Thank you. And how are you? I'm good. I'm I'm here. I'm living. I'm, I'm not even surviving anymore. I feel like I'm thriving. I'm in a little bit of pain right now, but I, I, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Why are you in pain? I'm 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 just I'm fucking done with flow yoga right now. I can't do it anymore. Oh, I've yeah, injured yeah, my. Yeah, yeah. I'm a hyper mobile. You, you, know, you, you know this, yeah. Which is why I love you. And, You're one and, of us. And, yeah, one of us. One of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my. Um, I think just, you know, over the last year of Zoom, I, okay, so over the last year of Zoom, knock on wood, that I have actually, you know, yeah, totally, as she knocks on her head. (laughs) Um, Over the last year of Zoom, you know, as a teacher, in order to make my business and myself a little more sustainable, I've I've taken everything online, duh. Um, But the second thing is, you know, I end up teaching somewhere around 14 hours a week. And so I'm demoing around 14 hours a week, which isn't the smartest thing in the world, but I get really excited when I'm teaching. And so I want to do the classes and I, you know, I I get pumped up and I do all the things. And I think that, and we've talked about this on a personal level, but I think that I've just gotten sloppy maybe somewhere in there. And now my lumbar spine is not feeling great. So I think I either have a herniated disc or something is inflamed. So I'm going to the chiropractor mm. on Thursday to find out more. But flow yoga just doesn't feel good for me anymore. It's the only mm. thing that feels good is when I go to the gym and lift weights. I know. Welcome to my world. And it was a real, yeah, we're talking about something totally different than what our original podcast idea was. But just a quick side note, guys. Um, yeah, it was exactly the same thing for me. I think as much as I absolutely love the yoga practice, I think I realized that it was super unsustainable in my bendy joints. Um, I'm actually now after a long period of only strength training now, very gently going back to it a bit more, Mm -hmm. but also because I'm doing my neuroscience course, I'm underpinning it with so many more visual and vestibular drills, cerebellum activators, because they can actually help enhance how your body operates when it actually is flowing through your yoga practice. Right. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really, you know, it kind of, this really all does tie into our, our, our conversation of today, which we wanted to talk about sustainable yoga teachers. And one of the things that I really just want to pull from, you know, we wanted to do this episode for a few reasons, you know, obviously there is a whole new landscape in the yoga industry and in the way that we're teaching yoga, which is why I'm personally injured. I I did it to myself. I don't blame yoga, but also if you just heard Celeste in what she said, you know, about she's doing neuroscience training and da, 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 like Mm. you have to keep up these days as yoga teachers. You can't just sit back and do the same old crummy things that people were doing before and expect to succeed. That's not the way yoga is anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's um, a double-edged sword because, um, often, you know, teachers invest a lot of time and a lot of money into a teacher training and, like we all do, you graduate and you feel like you don't know enough and you're terrified you're going to hurt someone unless you know absolutely everything. And uh, just to take a little side digression from this chat, I actually had a really heartfelt email from someone recently coming into my inbox going, I've heard about your mentoring process that you and Danny put people through, but I definitely cannot afford that. I suffer from multiple sclerosis. Um, I've actually been lucky enough to get my teacher training on a scholarship, but I know I need guidance on how to make my yoga business sustainable and I just can't afford to do your thing. So I was like, let's just have a chat on the phone. You know, I really admired her courage to read out to me. Anyway, we're on the phone 
And the first thing she say, says to me is, I'm really fearful because I don't know if I know enough to start teaching yet. Mm. And I was like, do you think I know everything? And she was like, no, you don't know everything. Right. And I said, when I first started, do you think I knew everything then? And she was like, no. And I said, and do you think I would have learned all the things I'd learned if I had not taught? And she was like, no. <laughs> so, and the point I'm, I'm making with the story, guys, is Danny's absolutely right. We can't be doing Warrior One, Warrior Two, Reverse Warrior until the cows come home and expect that people will want to come back to our classes. We do need to right. keep learning and evolving and we do need to stay cutting edge. But don't let that be the reason that you don't start. Right. Does that make sense? So that's yeah. why I called it double edged sword because, yes, that yearning and that desire to learn and grow needs to be there. But please don't use that as an excuse not to do stuff. Yeah. And, and it's important, yeah. it's important, it's important to know too, you know, like, okay. So I, I really wanted to get, there's so much, so much I want to pull from this. I, I feel like we <laughs> could do like a, a series of this, but I think that the, the yoga studio model is fucked. It's never going to go back to what it was. It was unsustainable before we clearly saw that like literally everything closed, shut down and closed and then never reopened because of COVID, which goes to tell you that the studios weren't actually doing that great in the first place, right? Oh, so true. They didn't have a big pot of money to dip, dip into when shit hits the fan. Absolutely. Maybe I should second guess opening up a studio. But Don't do it. No. But, but I do think, you know, that there, that there is space now for, a, for, for everybody. I actually think that, you know, as yoga teachers, we kind of get caught up in this little bubble of well, so and so's doing it. And here's the thing, yoga teachers, you follow each other online. So stop, so stop just looking at your like direct bubble because there are a lot more students out there than there are teachers. And two, if you have a direct plan, you can make yourself sustainable. Now, the thing that I can't teach you, or rather, I guess, you know, Celeste and I can teach you all the things, anyone can teach you all the things, but no one can do the work for you. You have to be willing and wanting to do the work. And that means accepting failure sometimes. That means showing up and teaching to two people. That means going on your first tour, thinking you're a badass yoga teacher from San Francisco and flying into Chicago, you know, busting open the doors of the studio and being like, hi, I'm here to teach my backbending workshop. Who's here? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Know, yeah. <laughs> it's it just, all happened it, to it, all of us. <laughs> it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, it takes a lot of courage to, to want to be able to step into doing something new. It takes a lot of courage to want to do what you love. And it also takes hard work and grit. 100%. I think there's it no way around so it. so much hard work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a difficult one because, you know, you hear people saying, you know, work smarter, not harder. And, you know, I think you're extremely smart and you're doing things that are extremely cutting edge and yet you, you graft, you know, you really put the hours in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because you'll hear people like Gary Vee talking and I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's a marketing guru and, um, you know, he's this larger than life character, even though he's small like me, I think all the little right. people are always, always super loud and over the top. <laughs> and that's why I probably resonate with him on some level. But the thing is, you know, he definitely has been very, very honest and he's like, look, the whole concept of a work life, balance is is really it's a real myth because if you are running your own business it is going to be cutting into your personal hours um right. and and that's okay because if you really have a strong passion for it it shouldn't be this huge big sacrifice you're making in fact it should be a really joyous part of your evolution and growth as a human being right right yeah i think it's important i mean it, this is this is my life you know and it's it's really interesting too when your brand is your life you know like i for a long time i had a hard time kind of sharing who I really was on Instagram because I was like, well, I'm going to keep this as like just my Danny Pompaloon yoga. And this is who I am as yoga. But now I just don't care. Like, you know, I, I kind of had this thing where actually a lot of it I learned from, from you, Celeste, was, you know, the, the vanity of everything. It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be the most gorgeous pictures. It's just me doing my thing and sharing the wisdom and the knowledge and the learning that I have. And that translates. Once I was able to accept that, and really, you know, integrate that into what I do, I realize, like, yeah, sure, I have a following on Instagram, but I don't really give a shit about it. I don't really, I, I, of course, I want to see some numbers go up and down and somewhere in between. But what I care most about is, you know, now when I wake up every day, 
I don't care about your pelvis. I don't, I don't want to tell you stories about, you know, Krishna and Arjuna today. Like that's not what I want to do is remind people how beautiful they are, how amazing they truly are, how much potential they really do have that lights me up. And the other thing is talking to yoga teachers about their business and talking yeah. to yoga teachers about how we can get them sustainable and reminding them that the work that they do is important and they should be valued. And that once I was able to make that just really clear, like going on Instagram is so easy for me now when I hated it, I resisted it so much. I didn't want to do it. It was like work. And now I'm like, I want to go talk to people. I want to answer all the questions about what people yeah. like. It's so much fun because I love this. This is where I'm at, you know, at, at this stage in my life, this is where I'm at. I want to help people yoga teacher specifically, I want to help them thrive. Yeah. And what's interesting is you've just described your niche and, you know, that's a huge, obviously guys, we're going to touch upon niche now, but it's a huge topic. We actually have it as a, a complete, it's a one week module in our um, mentoring program because it is so important to discover exactly what mm -hmm. your niche is. And Danny has very beautifully articulated why. If you understand your niche, it's not about cutting people out and, you know, not serving everyone. It's more just about you being able to show up as yourself. And right. I feel like that's where people go a little bit wrong when they're trying to set up their business is they feel they have to become someone else. Now, right. I'm not saying that you don't have to sometimes put a big smile on your face and make your hair look nice and, you know, just show up as a professional, I'm not saying that that's something you don't do. Obviously, we're always going to have some masks that we put on to present ourselves to the outside world. But at the same time, it's unsustainable to be a completely different person talking about things you don't care about each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried. I tried to be the person who spoke about chakras. You know, I knew that that's what the, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, you know, you know, you're, you're really, um, almost hurting yoga in the way you do things. And I, and that, that hurt me for a long time. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be the person who's hurting people. But I also know that it would actually be worse if I tried to teach about things that I didn't care about. For example, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the chakras enough to pretend I can teach about them. Do you understand? Totally. Totally. Yeah. And why would you like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't for, for, just in hearing you say this, you know, as a reflection back, like I wouldn't want you to do that either. You know, that's some no. of the, that's, that's some of the feedback that I give to, you know, when, when people start to sign up for the course and we do that little questionnaire and we're like, let's get to know you, you know, when I review those, when we both review those and fine tooth, you know, like it's really important for me to pull out those themes and really give people that direct feedback of like, this is not you, this is not what you're putting in your you know, in mm. your sheet, this is not, this is not what you're communicating. This is not what you expressed to me when we had our conversation about, you know, what, what it is that lights you up. So it's important for us to find out what does light us up and how we continue to speak about that and how mm. that becomes really, you know, not only our messaging, but those are our people, right? You don't have to search for your students. They're right there in front of you. Once you figure out what it is that lights you up. And I think, uh, you know, I think in order to find that you have to have the right mindset. You know, you have to, you have to be able to put to, to open and expand and be willing to, to listen, you know, to, to get a different perspective on how growth and how change is so important. Again, Celeste, you know, I credit, I credit you for, for a lot of this stuff, but you know, a lot of this, a lot of the material that you put in uh, this last round as you were presenting this stuff, I, I just remember being like, oh, yeah, this is a, a, I'm going to take some notes here, too. <laughs> because without the mindset, you can't grow. Yeah. And guys, listen, I mean, one of the big things about mindset that's really important to always remember is that you are never going to feel ready. Yes. You're never going to feel that this what you're going to put out, whether that's an Instagram post, an email or a class that it's good enough. Yes. You're never going to feel confident. So if you are waiting for that mindset to settle into you and you're like, oh, I feel confident now. I feel ready now. You're going to be waiting a really long time. Yeah. If you can just get going, if you can start really the way that you build that confidence and that momentum and that the way you kind of start looking at the content that you've produced as opposed to with a super critical eye of nothing being good enough, eventually you'll look at it and go, it wasn't perfect, but A, I got it out there. That's the most important thing. B, it did help someone because then your focus is not anymore on these external sort of um, meaningless 
shallow variables such as how many people like my Instagram post, but it actually goes a little bit layer deeper than that. And now you're able to actually help someone and right. that feeds your internal sense of worth at a very, very high level. Why do you think so many people get caught up on that social media part though? It's, um, it feeds into the brain loop just with, uh, we know all this already. So I know I'm talking to you, I'm preaching to the, the choir. It's just the whole loop of the dopamine. You know, it is an addictive thing seeing that hit that you get and it is a dopamine spike. Um, and also I think it's not even just that. I think we understand on an intrinsic level that business should always have a trajectory of growth. We grew up in capitalism. We're in a capitalist society, whether we like right. it or not. Mm -hmm. And we understand that for a business to operate effectively, there needs to be some level of growth. And unfortunately, I believe that social media gives you a false perception of growth. Right. Yes, your numbers may be going up, but Danny and I can tell you that we know some really, really big names in the industry who aren't earning great deals of money. And I'm not saying it's about the money. They might be helping a lot of people and that's fantastic. But what I'm just trying to get convey with what I'm saying is that don't equate someone being huge, having a massive platform on social media as equaling effective business acumen. The two don't yeah. necessarily go together. I was blown away when I, you know, one of the people that wanted to come into the chorus, you know, we kind of looked at, at, they wanted a call. And so I, I jumped on with them and they've got 150 something K on Instagram. And I was just like, well, you know, like just kind of like filling in like the gaps, like well, what's going on with your business? What do you want to do? You know, like how, how can I, how can I help help you with the course questions? And their, their, their basic thing was like, well, I want to earn more money. And I said, okay, well, how much more do you want to earn? And where are you at now? And when I got the figures, I was blown away. I was like, how are you barely making just a little over minimum wage on what wow. you're doing on Instagram? You know, like not, I just, it, it was, it's very easy to get, like you said, it's very easy to get caught up on the metrics and mm. I'm not into that. What I want to do is teach people yeah. how to be, you know, again, sustainable and how to create something that long, it's a long-term game, right? So I want to give you the tools and the resources and the support so that you can do this for a really, really, really long time and not just for a short term. And that's also going to require work, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's a lot nicer when you're not doing it on your own. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's tough on your own, but just going back to what you said about the, the metrics and being caught up in the numbers. Um, you, I want you to think of your business for you guys who are listening and you're, you know, into business. Think of your, your business, your yoga business as a pie chart. So draw a circle and think of all the different things that you would need to do and excel in to actually start attracting new clients, to retain customers, to build revenue and actually draw out the little triangle pies. And ask yourself how much time you are dedicating to the different sections. Right. And what we'll probably find with the people that are not making money from their Instagram is that they're dedicating a lot of time to the platform, but they're not monetizing that. And, and the reason that's not working is they're not building their email list. They're not creating um, classes where people are excited about coming back. They, they, they haven't thought outside the box in terms of events, workshops, retreats. They maybe haven't got a on-demand library. You know, there's all these different strategies that are, we're so lucky guys we have got these this technology at our fingertips and what we aren't doing is tapping into that in a big enough way to actually create a sustainable business right yeah it's imp it's important to to not only utilize that but also i think it can be overwhelming for a lot of people mm, i think what, it you is people, overwhelming yeah there's a lot there's there's a lot there's a, there's a lot going on but if you have you know a simple really simple strategy on how to do it it's pretty simple you know like i, I think it's one of the things that I love about what we do is, you know, the, the, like just part of the homework is creating something that you can take away and, and do at the end of the day. So that, that training and that real life, like one-to-one -one of making it work works, you know, yeah. without having it to be creepy. The other thing, Celeste, I wanted to ask you about is, and I keep wanting to do this Instagram post. I'm still going to work on it this week, but I can't with this creepy marketing anymore. I can't with this creepy marketing <laughs> and these people like I, I've no, like, listen, everywhere. those of you listening to the show right now, if you've been on Instagram the last like week or so, you've seen my stories, how it's just like, and my name is Josh and I wanted to teach yoga. It's just like this, like sad, like story. That's like, it just it seems very like, 
Well, it works for know. some people. He gets customers. This is the thing. Like, if he feels good about it, I guess he just has to go ahead and do his thing. But I guess your point, and I think that this is a very valuable point, is that you can see through the bullshit. And don't be fooled, guys. People have amazing bullshit detectors inside of them. If they can see you're not being authentic and who you really are, they yeah. are not going to stick around. And you know what? Some people might, but they're not the kind of people you're ever going to want to have on a retreat, let me tell you. Yeah. Those people are going to show up and you're going to be like, good God, what a load of difficult people. <laughs> and one yeah. of the things I always think back to, yeah, I haven't got a, a following that's breaking the internet by any stretch of the imagination, but let me tell you the people who show up on my retreats, yeah, they're unbelievable. They yeah. all walk away, best friends. They still today, after many years later, are still all, all connected to each other. They're so kind, so helpful just brilliant individuals. And I have had personal talks with lots of other yoga teachers who have told me, like, to be honest, I went on this retreat that the people were just awful, like nasty yeah. to each other. And the vibe was just off. And so there you go, guys, who are you attracting into your bubble? And if you're going to be doing something as inauthentic as this dodgy marketing business, maybe you're not going to attract <laughs> the kind of people that you want to hang out with. It's just so creepy, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh. and then like the tone of voice changes too. like the, the like, Hey, I'm here to help. <laughs> your I'm not going off. Yeah. It just doesn't, maybe it just doesn't resonate with me. You know, like, like, Maybe, but I think, I think it's good that you're calling it out as well. I think it's good. I it think seems it's good that you're standing up to it. It seems creepy and it seems wrong. And like, I would rather show up and be like, Hey, listen, like I have this skill set that I've not been, you know, formally trained in except for life experience, which I literally have built everything from the ground up. And if you want to hear some of the stuff that I have to say, great. And if that's not your cup of tea, cool. That's, awesome, yeah. you know, like I'd rather have a real conversation with you and be like, yeah, this is what I got. This is what I don't have. Cool. Is this, you know, do you want to try this out or, you know, kind of like, like a simple first date versus like, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> my name is Danny. I've scaled a business to duh, 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 duh. come on. And duh. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So I think that's one of the things that makes you so great, Danny. Honestly, that, I think it's why you've done so well. That I'm a bozo. <laughs> no, that you're you. It's so, you're yeah. the best. Well, that's th well, thank you. I appreciate it. I have, I have a question for you. What was there ever a time when you were like, when you were, you know, like doing your thing, I guess, creating your yoga business where you just were like, this isn't going to happen. Like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, no, weirdly, no, but I have had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, I mean, to be, to be honest with just recently I messaged you and I was like, do you know, I've never had a mentor and I feel mm. like I need one. I really do feel like I need one. I was, I was having a lot of doubts about a platform that I was working with and, and I reached out to you. I reached out to a couple of other friends that are doing well. And, and it was just nice to be able to talk to someone and bounce ideas yeah. off of someone who's walked the walk, yeah. who has experience, who's kind, who's honest it, it really helped me so, so much. And so I've never wanted to throw the towel in because to be honest, guys, I absolutely love what I do. Same. It's a lot. It's so hard sometimes, honestly, sometimes there's a lot of tears in this house. <laughs> Everyone thinks yeah. I'm this happy person, but Dan knows different. Dan sees the tears behind all the positivity. And, and guys, sometimes it is really, really tough, but I could not do anything else. I yeah. couldn't. And so yeah. I think that's why I've stuck around. What about you? Yeah. Have you ever wanted to throw the towel in and kick the bucket? <laughs> I <laughs> the it, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <Bye. laughs> this is it. I don't think I don't think that I've ever wanted to throw the towel in per se. Like I've never wanted to be like, <clears throat> you know, for me, yoga was so important. It is so important. And you know, when I moved to San Francisco, it was like part of like, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And this is where all the people that I thought were successful were doing. And what it was more like when I went through my ego side of yoga and I did everybody like, listen, I thought I was super cool doing festivals and like, <laughs> you know, I got on an online platform and like, I did not even going to fret. It was all egoic. Most of it, not all of it, but you know, like I, I genuinely did want to do all the things. It just, as I reflect back some of it, I was like, did you really want to do that? But Mm -hmm. I look back at that now and I'm like, oh, those are certain chapters that I don't have to do again. 
you know, mm-hmm. and, and the way that I showed up beforehand, I don't necessarily want to show up as that version of, of my teaching of my teach of, of me as a teacher because of, you know, growth. And, and there have been days where, you know, like I, I say this all, well and often I work harder now than I ever have in my entire life and I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things that I have going on. You know, I have a podcast, I have an app, I have Instagram, I have an email newsletter, I teach corporates, I teach privates, I teach my public classes, I teach workshops, I teach 200-hour trainings, I teach 500-hour trainings, I teach 200-hour and 500-hour trainings for other people, and I do retreats. Like, I literally do everything. And now I'm thinking about, well, I have opened up my home studio that's not open to the public yet, but now I'm thinking about opening up a studio studio. And there are some days where I'm like, Danny, like, Mm -hmm. why are you doing all of this? Mm -hmm. And then I realize, like, oh, that's just, it's, it's, it's who I am. And there are times where I need breaks for sure. But I've never had a moment where I'm like, I never want to do this again. Mm, I've never had, yeah, yeah. It's like the day that I started, you know, trading for yoga and was like scrubbing toilets. Like, I was never above scrubbing toilets. Mm -hmm. I really was not. I would show up every week and there was like, I think it was like nine toilets. It was a lot. And three, it was three, <laughs> time, three, three nights a week for a year. That's you know? a lot. And I, yeah. And I just did it. I was happy to do it because the truth is I'm just happy to be here. No, yeah, that's so good. Ooh, it's so, listen, guys, for those of you who are listening, I just want to say that it's not easy. I know that a lot of you guys are going through a lot of struggle. It's been a grueling year with the whole pandemic and all the pivot we had to go online. It's, it's been really, really tough. And all I can say is if you still, after all that struggle in your heart go, I couldn't do anything else, then isn't that the best thing? Like, obviously, when we're on our deathbed, I I know this is pretty morbid, but I think it is a powerful mental exercise that when you are eventually on your deathbed, what are you going to look back and really remember? And I think a big portion of our memories are going to be all those little faces showing up to the class with all their willing eyes and you know, their little bodies moving around, whatever we tell them, they're going to do it. I mean, it's so special. And we get to do a little bit of research on something inspirational and we share that. And then they have a little tear in class and they come to you afterwards and they go, thank you so much for what you said. Oh, wow. On a deep human level, we are tapping into two of the most important factors for your uh, thriving. And that is contribution and growth and yeah. so few jobs out there can actually can actually give people that they they tap into um you know more superficial things like earning a living and having significance but that deeper side of of growth and contribution i think is sorely missing uh, missing in the corporate world yeah yeah i i know that i could easily go get a job you know as like a product manager or Oh, you'd like, smash it! <laughs> something like anything that was like that, that was like organizational, like in a in a in a in a company, like I could and leadership. Easily, you would be a great leader as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I excel yeah. at that stuff. I could CEOs. easily do that and like get a, get a four hundred one k and get health benefits and get vacation pay and all that stuff. But I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think that that life is for me because it wouldn't give me. Again, like I know what my thing is now. I want to specifically, I want to help yoga teachers grow and thrive and do well. And I want to help, you know, on, on the subset, I want to help the students that are like, those of us that want to spend some really solid time on ourselves. Like I want to do that too. Those are, those are like my things in life. And so I'm going to continue to do that. Finding that, knowing that is really special for me. It's, it's, you know, it, it makes, it makes the work that I do really potent. It makes the time that I get to spend with, you know, people like you really important in my life. Like, you know, it makes the time that when we do our, our courses together with, you know, the, the, the new groups of people that get to connect, like that is special. That is mm-hmm. something that like really, really, really will forever light me up. And I'll look, I'll look back and be like, yeah, I actually was able to like, you know, like to contribute to someone's life to consider to it. I remember the day that I found out like yoga was my thing. Like I was like, wow. You know, I was like 30 and, and I, you know, like I got You're out so of lucky. I, I got out of debt doing the thing that I love to do and save money. Wow. Like, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Like, come on. Like that's, that's, that's beyond incredible. I, I want that for everybody. Yeah. I would like to see more yoga teachers thriving and guys, you know, if you, 
if you haven't yet done the exercise of imagining you know, far, far into the future, you're all shriveled up because you've lived a ripe old age, <laughs> you know, and you're lying in your deathbed with all your loved ones around you. I really want you to take a moment to think deeply to yourself. What will you look back and remember the most? And um, I think that doing a job that you're truly passionate about is super important. And you know what? Actually, having said that, if working these grueling hours and dedicating to a business yourself, you're like, I just don't want to do that. I want to have my weekends and my evenings free. And I just want to do like, Something where I can switch off from work and not have to have this business in the back of my mind all the time. Guys, I highly encourage you to don't do what doesn't feel good because you think you have to. Yep. You know, if you're not feeling this yoga thing, don't do it. Like yeah. life is happening now for you, not to you. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's now. So take action now and do what really speaks to your soul. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Otherwise, you're just you're, you're cheating, not cheating. I should say you're, there's this opportunity that you have to be here. You know, how are we going to use it today? Amen. <laughs> Celeste, I love you to pieces. I hope you know that. Oh, uh, likewise. And guys, I just want to say, I love all of you as well. I know I haven't met all of you, but the fact that you are here right to the end of this podcast, man, so much respect for a dedicating time to your growth. Um, and really doing the job that you do is so, so special because you're showing up as yourself and you're touching someone's life each and every time. It's, it's really, really powerful guys. Don't ever underestimate what you do and how much respect I have for you guys. Yeah. I'm looking forward to our next batch of little babies. <laughs> yes. And actually on that note, guys, we did want to say we have a very, very few spaces left because we did a webinar and we actually almost sold out from that, but we have a few little spaces left if any of you guys are listening to this podcast and you'd like to join our next mastermind, it would be a huge privilege to have you with us. It's a seven week program this time, guys. We actually added a whole extra week where I'm going to be teaching you the skills of sales and persuasion, which you think you're not a salesperson. I'm so sorry to tell you the bad news. We're all in sales. Each and every one of us have to hone our sales skills to be able to do this job. Yeah. That's so true. It's, it's, I mean, it's, and also just, it, it works like the, the, the method is in the, you know, we, it works. <laughs> That's it. It. Works. <laughs> it totally works. And if you do it, if you do the work, <laughs> if you do the work, yeah, no one can do it for you. Well, we'll leave that in the, uh, we'll leave the link in the show notes for everyone to, uh, to sign up. I think that's all we got today, Celeste. That's until, all we got. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Until the next Seeker and Sage, this is Danny and Celeste saying peace out. Peace out, peeps. Mwah.